now in its ninth year. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight from New York, New York, the city so nice they named it twice. That's Laurie Thompson, ladies and gentlemen, who is in the center of the picture because we've been turning center stage on and off because a lot of times it, the camera moves around, but we got too we got some kind of little thing in the bottom of the picture, so she's back on center stage again. But it doesn't yeah. it doesn't seem to be as severe, but we'll see. Anyway. I feel like I'm playing Carnegie Hall when you say yeah. center stage. Now, you're getting like, ready to go on vacation. Yes, we are going to Rio de Janeiro, and we are going to Carnival in Brazil, which is, um, once I don't have a bucket list, list per se, but I've always wanted to go to Carnival. I, so. I, I, that's, I, I, I'll tell you what turned me off to Carnival is that, that Rio de Janeiro has become a hot, uh, for years, has been a very dangerous city. Yeah, you know, that's what we heard. So leave all your jewelry at home on the ship. Uh, that's what we've been told repeatedly. Yeah, you know, the, and so who wants to get attacked? And so it's you know, um, I don't. I'm not wearing any jewel. I'm not taking any jewelry. Maybe yeah. to wear on the ship or something. But I don't have anybody to impress. So well, well, we just, I always warn people about um, Barcelona. Uh, oh, Barcelona. Barcelona. Did you get pickpocketed? Uh, uh, no, what happened was I took uh, uh, Kathleen there. Uh huh. And, and uh, she was walking down the street, and a guy grabbed her pocketbook and ran with it. Did she not chase un, it? Not uncommon in Barcelona. You should never carry no. anything outside. And uh, she then, you remember her, she was like. Uh, oh. She was great. She, she was, was, a, she I mean, was I a tall blonde who could beat the crap out of me, okay? She could. Never I mean, she did, but she could. Fuck. Right. <laughs> she hauled ass and chased, chased that guy. She didn't She didn't put up with it, right? And yeah. she ran after him, and she was getting very close, and he just threw the purse down. <laughs> so she stopped well, and grabbed good. her purse, okay? Comes yeah. back. All her money was gone in the purse. While he had run, he had taken the stuff he needed. Uh huh. And then he right. dropped the purse because what are you going to do if you're chasing a guy who's got your purse and he drops it? You're going to grab it. You're, you're going to stop and grab it when he's going to get away. So yeah. by then, he could have stolen everything he wanted to out of your pocketbook, which he did. Yeah. And yeah. plus, this is organized. I mean, there are. Uh, rings like teenagers where they have classes and teach you to like lift a pocket or unzip a purse they attach bells to them so that you can get so smooth the bell won't ring and then when you go out into the real public you know you're trained to do that yeah. where people can feel it yeah, yeah so but, I'm afraid of going to cities that are that violent so that's why I've never gone to Rio you know well, well, we'll see, because I've heard the same thing on Rio, and it's getting, I don't know if it's because, because social media is more prevalent, but it seems like the reports of the, have escalated. So we're just playing it safe. You know, we don't, um, we don't do, we're, we're pretty cautious. We have that, you know, cautious mindset, but, if, yeah. you know, I figure what happens, what happens. Like in New York, when I was mugged in Greenwich Village, not mugged, I was in a store. He had gotten into my purse, and I got it back. Yeah. But I remember you when we were in New York. <laughs> I said, yeah. meet us at, I don't know, 2nd Avenue and somewhere, right? Yeah. And so we're waiting there for you, and it's, you're late, as usual, you know. And <laughs> I was like, we, you, we see you come walking up to us, and you have been coming out of the worst neighborhood in New York City. Alphabet Where City, I eventually right? moved to because it 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 got gentrified, but it was the yeah. Tompkins Square Park 
You didn't even get near Tompkins Square Park at night. And you were just yeah. walking through it. Hi, everybody. How you doing? I'm Lori Thompson. I'm going to, you know, and I went, wow. Well, she that's was, true. She walked it, through. I said, Do you, did you know what you just walked through? And she said, no. I said, <laughs> well, ignorance it's, is It's blessed, called but, Alphabet City. Yes, that's exactly. Because MTV had had a party in this derelict warehouse that they had, you know, revved up for a party. And uh, so I went down to the MTV party and I started walking and I thought, this is a little dicey, but MTV, you know, they're looking out for us. They wouldn't have a party in a dangerous neighborhood. So I just thought, well, I'll keep walking. I know it's not far. And sometimes naivety is a blessing. Yeah. But anyway, we, 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 were, we were just, our jaws were dropping. You know, huh? <laughs> yeah. She just walked through Alphabet City at like midnight. What? You know? <laughs> and then where I had my uh, wallet stolen was in a clothing store in Greenwich Village. And, but I got that one back. I was inside the store and I got in the habit of checking my purse every minute or so because I'd heard the rumors. And so I'm in the clothing store. I noticed these two guys, big guys, uh, they were kind of shouldering me uncomfortably close. And so I looked down and someone, and it had to be someone in my immediate vicinity, had unzipped my purse and pulled out the wallet. Wow. So completely on instinct, completely, I spun around and said, give me my wallet, you motherfucker. And so he's like, what, what, what? But by that time, I had my hands on the leather of my wallet, which, you know, everybody's familiar with with how their wallet feels yeah. and i just grabbed it and said this is what i'm talking about and called him some more choice names and then he was like he took off but they were very interested in detaining me and even the security guy he was like no no man maybe this was a misunderstanding mo 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 but i got out and there was a little lady that had been waiting for the bus who had seen through the windows the whole thing and of course I walk out and she was going you're my hero <laughs> I saw you take on the this, where, where did this happen this was in Greenwich Village wow um, I don't know what part because I'm not you know real familiar but uh, yeah that was one of the things in my life was that, what, was that on one of our trips there Oh yeah, yeah, but yeah. you never told that story on the air I, you know did I? I thought I, I told no, you it never did the, oh yeah because it's it was left an impression i didn't want it to sound like bragging um because it was probably a stupid thing to do but i got the wallet back well, I'll so tell you what, that happened. <clears throat> what happened with uh, susan my third wife her parents mm -hmm. when we got married had an apartment in alphabet city they lived very dangerously in alphabet city you just didn't go out at night that was the big thing okay and they said well we're going to move and <clears throat> as a wedding gift, we're going to give you the house, the apartment. They own the, the apartment. They own the apartment. And we're going to give you the apartment. And Susan and I talked it over and finally said to them, nah, <laughs> we don't want an apartment down there. We'll never leave yeah. the house, you know? And now how has gentrification oh, taken oh, over? It's just, you know, yeah. yeah it's not a problem at all. Yeah. I mean, I went and down there one night at like midnight to get laid, but, you know, I'm willing to risk my <laughs> life for that. Any guy would risk his life to get laid. <laughs> you heard the zeros were, or you heard that the, the, the Zs were easy. Is that mm -hmm. why you went to Alphabet City? So I went <laughs> yesterday to my urologist. <laughs> Although some people will say, what? You already told these stories on the air. But this is a couple of weeks. We're running this a couple of weeks after. Okay. Anyway, I went to my urologist yesterday for my yearly. And and yeah. by the way, everybody, I'm no no sign of the cancer. Okay. No. Good, good. I'm still on my PSA is undetectable. I don't know. <laughs> went to Rio and hung out there and is is now mugging people. My prostate. <laughs> but anyway, he said. So you having any problems? I said. Not really, I said. It's just that, you know, the thing doesn't. My my penis has become a vestigial organ, <laughs> and he got a good laugh out of that because doctors know what vestigial means, and if you don't <laughs> look it up, you know, right? 
That's why people are being born without appendixes. Yeah. Who needs? Yeah. I said, but you know, it worked well for years and years and years. It, it, my my penis and I had a lot of fun. I don't have any regrets. Okay, you know. Yeah. Eventually, it eventually, well. it was gonna say, okay, I'm tired. I'm worn out. Goodbye. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done as much damage here as I can. Yeah, and then he looked. He looked. He did a, 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 a sonogram on on it, and he said. <laughs> oh, what are those shadows? And then he th said to himself, "Oh yeah, you had those, you had the implants, you know, where they shot me up with a whole bunch of radioactive seeds." Yes, yes. And those were the seeds he was looking at. And he says, "Are they now? Do they continue to work? No, or do they? No, have they're only good shot? for about three months, and they kill whatever they have to kill. And until <laughs> but before that time, you're told by the doctor, uh, don't uh, don't get near any pregnant women." And don't to put children on your lap until the, wow. the while the while the seeds are working. So I was walking around. I was radiating, you know. <laughs> you were great at Christmas parties. They just I, put a little star on had, your. I probably would have had trouble going through uh, machines at the airport or something like that with that going on. But you, you know. may have a paper yeah. clip in your pocket can yeah. set so them anyway, off. So uh, uh, you're going on vacation. We and, are. We're uh, and I, you know, we take a lot of. I don't mean to sound like oh, we're world travelers, but we take quite a few vacations. And uh, I was, I'm really excited about this one, just because it's. I remember when, remember when the World Cup was in the Bay Area, it was at mm -hmm. Stanford. Yeah. And I went to one of those games and stayed at, after the game, and the Brazilians took over. Uh, one of those shopping malls there, I can't remember which one, an outdoor mall, and it was a party every night. Brazilians know how to have fun. They also know how so, to win the World Cup, you know. Yeah, but, oh yeah. But, and so we're just excited to come home, and plus I'm gonna, <laughs> our neighbor, we always tell them when we're gonna be gone, so if they see any nefarious activity, yeah. they'll know to put a quell in it. But uh, the other thing, too, I said, we'll bring you some beads, Bob. And he goes, oh, that's great. Parrot heads love beads because they're Margaritaville people. They're parrot heads and they go to these margarita conventions. And so I'm bringing them some beads for my parrot head neighbors. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, 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 you're going for a month, though, right? We are almost. Yeah, a month. But then when we're going on a, a the world cruise is six months. I'm still kind of wrapping my head around that idea because it sounds so glamorous. And yet, um, I don't know, would you, do I want it? It's essentially you're moving to a new town, even though our, we go on smaller cruise lines, you know, you're for yeah, six I, months. You know, to me, a month would be almost too much for me, you know? Yeah, that's what I wonder. If you're having a great time, it'll be a blast. If you're not digging it for some reason, it will seem like eternity. So you just kind of have to so find. So when you're your on the home. world cruise, we're going to have to do this while you're on tour, right? You're going to have to find a Wi-Fi spot, and we'll do two of these at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, it's yeah. been. It, um, <laughs> that, oh, well, uh, well, yeah. well, 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 it'd be Lori Thompson's world tour. You know. Yeah. It, I was thinking about taking fun. one of those, but. I heard somewhere that there's some complaints about that world tour. Is it what, what do they stem from? I don't know. I really don't know. Marjorie said it to me. I said, you know, there are world tours that we could take because we're going to get this money and we got to blow it. And I, <laughs> what, what better way to blow it than on vacation? And I said, we could yeah. we just get on a boat and take a world tour. And she said I, I, she had heard something that some people have complained about it, that it's not that good. You know. Well, I, I think that it sounds so appealing. And so you book it and you have all these high hopes, but just like anything, yeah. you know. A what's what's the anything, size of that boat? It is under 2,000. Oh, God. And I, it's under 1,000. I could 1, never get Marjorie to get on that. She, she, won't, she looks, find me something that has 500 people, you know. Yeah, she's got the right idea because, and you have to be willing to, enjoy your time and and kind of reconfigure your well, time I, I, yeah but i would think if you're going on a world world cruise it's taken six months i think maybe you want to be on one of those bigger boats 
Right, you because know? you see more people, more things. They've got they're casinos more restaurants, on them. Restaurants, they're more of everything. You're not just yeah. stuck on a boat with 500 people that has dinner in the same place every night. Yeah, you know, it's essentially like you're moving to a town. Yeah, you know, and so yeah, I like I say, I'm still kind of wrapping my head around that idea. So oh, yeah. we shall see. So, uh, but, you know, so you're not all for going on it. Was what you're saying? Oh well, I, I, you know, it sounded so great, and I looked at the itinerary, and yet when I think that it's like being gone from now until July, and uh, it's it will be an adjustment. Well, I don't I, know, you know if I if I would want to be on vacation that long, you know? Yeah, uh, I'm, I, I'm I'm funny about it. I mean, I I enjoy vacations and so on, but I found that if I go somewhere more than three weeks. I get it squirrely. I mean, I, we, I went on a three-week uh, vacation a couple of years ago. Um, I think it was with Kathleen. And we went all over Europe and stuff, and we had, you know, three weeks. And by the third week, living out of a suitcase and so on, I just oh, wanted to get I just wanted to get home. You know, I got well, home, that- and I put my feet up on the table, and I said, well, thank God that's over. You know. Yeah, see, and I, I'm looking ahead and troubleshooting. I always play devil's advocate. Like, am I going to get bored and squirrely with that? Um, but, you know, they do have laundry facilities. And I and plus, see, you unpack once. That's the great thing about going on one of these round-the-world cruises yeah. is you're not living out of a suitcase. You're kind of living out of your suite, and things are in drawers. and So and you it, have t- it. it takes off where? Somewhere in Florida, right? Yes, they all do. Although we uh, we fly out of Atlanta quite a bit because Atlanta has non stops to a lot of places in Europe, and so that's that's an advantage. Will you drive the car there? Or how do you get down? Uh, get to the airport? Atlanta. Uh, we have we. It's a long haul, so we usually drive. Um, we can leave from Pensacola, but it's never a non stop from Pensacola. So we have a friend drive us. And then oh okay that's cool yeah that's cool yeah we take it from there yeah but it's uh, yeah I'll I'll definitely send you some postcards of naked Brazilian people yeah well I'm almost there. we're getting to the point where uh, um, I'm you know, I have this money sitting in probate and it's a lot of it oh and it seems forever yeah but I I, I wrote yesterday to the uh, lawyers and they said uh, we've already identified all the assets and we're in the process of liquidating them. So it should yeah. be another couple of months, I figure, and then we can make the plans. You know. Oh, yeah, you, ben, you, just to have that much money, I mean, to follow your curiosities, to follow any news. Well, the person who ever- gave me, is left me the money, was a big cruise guy, big traveler. He would yeah. always be going, he went on a cruise four times a year, you know. Yeah. Uh, or well, when he was uh, working, he couldn't do it that often. But when he wasn't, he was doing it all the time. And I figured, how would he want me to spend that money? And I said, probably traveling like he did. Yeah. Well, and Ben, it's our we are for all intents and purposes, you know, ninety years here to experience this planet. And so I want to just find out as much as I can about the people I'm living with on the globe and about their, you know, I just like. Well, you're going to wind up being very disappointed. Why? Because they're all assholes. (laughs) (laughs) No, really, think about it. You know, I mean, you live on this beautiful blue marble, you know, it's gorgeous, just wonderful, right? And you have to fight with each other? For what? Know. You know, it's you have to kill each other. You have to go uh, at war. I mean, you look at somebody like uh, Netanyahu with Israel going into in, uh, going after twelve hundred people, okay, in mm-hmm. Gaza and killing over twenty thousand. And you got to go. What's wrong with you? You know, See, that's what's it. wrong and with you? We live here a short time on this beautiful planet, and you're depriving some people of using it. You know, I mean, we should be just every day thank whatever God you believe in 
that you were born on this beautiful planet and it's this richness of stuff to do with it. But all we're doing is fighting with each other. And by the way, while I'm at it, we're ruining the planet. Yeah. I know if we can just like set out to find the grace in every person and every situation, I think that's a good goal and you'll be happy a good portion of the time. Well, and yeah. yeah, I don't understand why we, why Rodney King, we all just can't get along. Yeah. Because it just, I, you know what though, Ben, it's ego and appetites. They are responsible, ego and appetites, they're well, responsible. Well, it also has a lot to do with uh, territory. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, man is territorial, and that's what they fight over. You know, they have armies, and they go in, and what's their job? To kill the other people. What? Can't you let people care. live? Can't you let I them enjoy care. what we have here for a very short time? Believe me, I'm at 84, I'm telling you, it's very short. I, I look yeah. back at my life, and I go, where? what was that? You know, what happened there? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I think it was go? Marlon Brando. Uh, who, when he was dying, his last words was something like, uh, is that all there is? <laughs> and, you know, unless you, I just want to, when I draw my last breath on this mortal coil, I just want it to want to look back and say, you know, I behaved with grace as much as I could, and I learned a lot, and I had a chance to love many people. Yeah. That would be a good but. But you, you, here you're going to Rio de Janeiro and you got to like uh, uh, watch out for your wallet. You know, you shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to go down right. there and, oh, this is a beautiful city and, and, and people are dancing and singing and everybody's having a good time and I'm going to have a good time too, you know. But Yeah. And, and that's unfortunate, but I figure, you know, with, wherever there's disenfranchisement, whenever people are feeling less than... Um, and you know they can't even get their basic needs met. Then theft is going to be a reality. Uh, yeah, it's and for, not. And for those of us who have it well off, we should mm -hmm. do something to help the people who don't. Yeah, you know, and make their That's... lives on this planet more of a joy. You know, we we mm -hmm. taking yes. care of it's taking care of each other. You know, yeah, and it's not communism and... or anything like that. I'm saying taking care of each other because. We're the family of man. God, mm -hmm. I'm being so corny here. I don't. Know. <laughs> you can walk for Hallmark, yeah. Uh, but the yeah, the thing is, I mean, if you just realize that the only real way to improve and work for world peace is to just be gracious to everyone in your you know milieu, your surroundings, your mm -hmm. friends, your family, yeah. and have a sense of humor. I mean, if we'd all just have a bigger sense of humor. Like even when we're cut off at the parking lot, you know, just, uh, you know, I look and go, you know, I've made that bonehead move. <laughs> I'm just going to let all, them. It's all territory. It's all territory. Yeah. 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 That, and I, I, I also blame a lot of it on religion. Okay. But you, you might mean, not well, agree with me on that, but, you know. Yeah. Well, no, religion, I mean, organized religion teaches a bunch of rules and they're not at all based in Christ's teachings. I mean, you know, or, you know, your prophet's teachings. Well, I mean, um, you know, if if Christ were to truly come back, uh, he would mm -hmm. look at what's being done in his name and going, did you really understand what I was saying? Did you get what, what part What part about it didn't you get? None of, none of the way you're living on this planet has anything to do with my teachings. Exactly. If in fact, That's if in fact there was a Christ and, you know, Whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, well, but but I, if, if you look at the teachings of Christ, nothing wrong with it. There's nothing, you know, as a Jew, I sit here and go, well, you know, I don't believe in Christ as Messiah, but the fact is that his teachings were positive messages about yes. people dealing yes. with each other, you know. Yeah, and by the way, he also threw out the money lenders too, so you know, yeah. Make right. not my father's house in a house of merchandise. Yeah, exactly. You see, you, yeah. know, you know your Bible. <laughs> That's right. I love to get into, uh, you know, like some snotty born again <laughs> that I'll be behind at the checkout lane. And when they'll try to zing me, like I'm such a worldly charlatan, um, you know, just a, a creep. Yeah. Um, I will come back at them with a scripture, which is the last thing they expect. Ah. <laughs> Yes. 
take yeah. that. But anyway. yeah, there's just much, much yeah. to be learned. I even like how people shock a shop and their slang in different countries. I love the slang. It's yeah. just fun to see people's words but for it. Anyway, I mean, we're, we're we wanted to st do some traveling, and so uh, you know, I mentioned that world thing to Marjorie, and she said she'd heard that there were some problems with it or something. What, I, what you? It could you just could be people do. go squirrely after a year, uh, half a year on a boat. Yeah, but you don't hear of serial killings on cruise. Uh, the cruise half a year is a short one, though, because the other one that we heard about is nine months. Oh wow, that's a now that's a long time. I don't know why that seems so much uh, longer. It than... is a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're it's nine goddamn months. Yeah. And, I, you know, I'll just, I'm willing to try it. And the thing is, if we hate it, we can always jump ship. We can just, might not literally, you yeah. know, we'll always just say, hey, you know, we'd like to get off here and we'd like our money back if possible. And uh, that that's what I'll, you know, I figure. You know, anytime I'm daunted by a situation, I'll go, hey, if I don't like it, I can well, quit. Well, I just want to wish you a happy time in Mardi Gras. So yeah. let, me, let, me, let me show you that. <laughs> I like your confetti. There we go. And, uh, it's a festival. It's a festival. Yeah. The festive I'll time. I'll yeah. bring back those beads, and what I don't give to the parrot heads, I'll send some to you and Marjorie, okay? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> And uh, hopefully what will happen is the next couple of reports that we'll do with you, you'll actually be in Brazil, hopefully, and be near some kind of Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And because they have them in the cities. The, if you want to get Wi-Fi on the cruise ships, it's notoriously bad. But you Supposedly you, get you can get a faster one on the cruise ships. But you, pay you got that. For it. it still blows. But uh, the... Yeah, if you uh, use the towns, though, when you're in port, and it doesn't quite work when you're on the ship in a port city, but when you go into the town, then you're offered you're offer this blank. Well, you might try flat. it from you might try it from the boat too. But anyway, you'll you'll be in touch yeah. with me, I guess, by uh, by text. Yeah, and yeah. Say, that's, Alex, that's can what... we do it at a certain time? Let's see. Actually, our time won't be that much off of your time. I don't really. Think. Well, I'm, um, trying, I'm trying to think what the time difference is between here and Rio de Janeiro. I'll uh, even wake up in the middle of the uh, night. Hold on a second. What, uh, uh, Echo, what's the time difference between here and Rio de Janeiro? Rio de Janeiro is two hours ahead of New York City. It's two hours ahead of New York City. Oh, so I'll just call you at three. You, 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 uh, it's two hours ahead of New York City. So how's if I it call ahead of New York Rio City? Time. Wait a minute. Yeah. How's it ahead of, of New York City? Because, if, wow, I guess South America moves further towards Europe. They just do everything are. different down there. <laughs> anyway, but you could call me at three and we could do it at one, you know, and whatever. Yeah. And all of we'll, that. We'll try and, it. I'll, and then we'll when you go on your world tour, we'll do one every every week from wherever you happen to be. Yeah. Because you, know? you, be you can get off the Here boat. In Singapore, it's Most Central places Singapore. on the face of the earth have good Wi-Fi, except on the boat. Okay? Yeah, exactly. And we can even try the boat for grins, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, just, I mean, just try a lot of things. Yeah. One of them is bound to work. Well, have a good vacation, my dear. Or, I will. Uh, uh, I will. I'll thank you, too. I'll send, I'll pepper you with postcards. And my best to Rick, you know. Thank you. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and we'll have, we'll have fun, and I'll talk to you internationally. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the world traveler, Lori Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Lori. Fun voyage. See you later, kiddo. <laughs> Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, everybody. How are you? Thank you, Lori. And uh, we'll see Lori in a couple of weeks, I guess, because uh, she's, she's gone. Uh, <laughs> she's gone. And, uh, you know, she'll, uh, she says she'll call me. And we'll try and do something while she's on vacation. But so far, I haven't heard from her, so I don't know. You know, she went down to uh, Rio de Janeiro. Okay, uh, they have uh, 
I guess what did they go down there for? Was this was this a time that they have the uh, Fat Tuesday and Mardi Gras and blah blah blah? No, that's New Orleans. Yeah, New Orleans. No, oh, that, that's uh, she's, she's going down to Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, but that's Carnival, right? That's Carnival. Same, it's, it's the same, same thing. Time. Isn't it yeah. the same thing? I mean, doesn't it celebrate the same thing? Yeah, but I think the women are a little bit more sexy in Carnival than here. <laughs> uh, you think so? I think so. Yeah. Well, yeah, down down in New Orleans, only one of those lousy beads, which somebody came along with a uh, with a uh, 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 item that uh, those beads are not good for the environment. They have some kind, of, uh, and they they are actually poisonous to a certain extent too. So well, didn't they show? There wasn't there a show like gee, like ten or fifteen years ago that showed them being made in China and? Uh, oh really? <laughs> Yeah, they showed the they showed them being made, and then there were the living quarters for the kids that were making them, and all this stuff. Yeah, and yeah, then then it's like, do they even know that you know, a girl's got to show her boobs to get 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 one, and the thing's only like worth twenty cents. It's, well, it's I think like, it's sexist because I show my boobs, and they don't give me beads. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Who came? Jeff, you gonna show your boobs? Mm, oh yeah. I'm right here. Yeah, you got you got what do you you got a couple scars there from all the heart work? Oh yeah, lots of them. He looks like really? a road, he looks like a road map. Yeah. Really? So that when you get good directions to your house, you just you take the street down to this street over here. You don't have to yeah, show us. No, 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 don't don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't <laughs> You're gonna demonetize them. <laughs> Look anything different? What? Oh yeah, I can see one scar going down and oh wow. Yeah, it's a pacemaker. He's a member of the oh, Zipper no. Club. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, you should do a tattoo like a zipper, a couple, <laughs> a couple, <laughs> a couple more. Yeah, just one across your head. You know, it's gonna do a checkup on you and go, what the heck? Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, but you're, you know, at least he's alive. Is yes. Well. That's it. Every day. You I'm didn't have any on. open heart surgery though, did you? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I've done. Uh, Let's see, one, two, three, four. I think I had four of them. Did you have bypasses? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well. How long ago yeah. was that? That was a long time ago. When was your last procedure? I was like 30 years old. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 30. Wow. You 35. So you had a bum ticker from the get-go, right? Yeah, yeah. But you're how well, old? You're how old now? Uh, I am now um, seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. Okay. Yeah. So yes. having gone from early thirties to now, and you're still you're still going strong. Forget mm -hmm. it. You know that's wonderful. That's yeah. Great. There's a lady at my work that has a pig heart. What? Uh, yeah. Who, who has a pig heart? Uh, uh, this is girl work. Let's girl work. But, but, but Jeff, so, so what no, happened? Well, they don't have a pig like, heart. They have a pig valve. A pig valve. I know. Pig yeah. valve. No, but she got a big thing, though. She's got something. I forget what. A long time ago. Yeah. But, Jeff, so, so what happened? Like, how old were you when you started noticing you had problems? Or did they notice this when you were young? I mean, <clears throat> how did you know? Yeah, I kind of I kind of went to, uh, I, w I was working at, at what, one company and they were thinking about moving me into another facility and they wanted to just have me uh, an update and go to the hospital and like physical just to, to physical and nothing and mm -hmm. anyway one guy he says eh, everything looks pretty good he says but you got some you got some aortic valve stuff mm -hmm. and you know in a year or so you might have to do something Wow, that's, and that's early about because, all I knew. Because I have aortic stenosis. Yeah. Uh, but at my age, it's just in my. I'm going to my uh, doctor tomorrow, and he's also a cardiologist, and he always gives me a test and does a echogram, and uh, mm -hmm. what I have is very minor stenosis, and it hasn't grown that much. So they he doesn't figure it's ever going to be a problem, but he just wants to make sure it doesn't. You know. But in your case, you probably had a real bad situation there if they had to, you know. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I went from, you know, 
It's really strange. But you got the story. You got this you medical get, yeah, device. Yeah. Covered mm -hmm. it. And I, and I went there at Yale and I said, yeah, you're going to have some surgery pretty soon. And uh, I said, well, let me let me find out if if they'll let me do it, you know, or are they going to fire me or I don't think they can fire what? you. Well, you know, you, you don't know. Back stuff. then, though, yeah, yeah, back then they could fire you for sneezing wrong or something. Right, you don't, you have no idea what's going. Well, on. for a company that makes medical devices, you think they would let you off for medical problems? Yes, and know? they did, but yeah. they were also a small company at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, there was like five hundred people, maybe the whole thing, and uh, and of course it became a <laughs> billion dollar company and uh, eventually they they sold everything to uh, Ethicon. Mm -hmm. But let me so so when did you have the stroke then? Oh so let's see so I have the the surgery mm -hmm. and everything is looking pretty good and then I get this stroke which uh, I'm at home and I got a, a headache like you wouldn't believe. Mm. And even worse than being married? Yeah. <laughs> this is like the worst thing that you've ever known. Mm -hmm. It hurts like crazy. So I uh, so Pam goes, uh, what should we do? And I said, let's just get in a car and go over to Yale and see what happens. And I says, my, my head is killing me. So I get there, and uh, there's a bunch of heart surgery guys who uh -huh. do this stuff. And they said, yep, we're going to start right away. Mm. You're ready. You th we need you. <laughs> or, or you knew them. So anyway, I find out the guy who was in medical school surgical school at that time I know his his father that I've known him for years and years and I find out who actually did the surgery and now he's a guy in Chicago who's like the head uh, neurosurgeon in Chicago yeah so you know it's kind of funny um and you know and then for a while things were Pretty calm. You didn't have any more problems. You didn't have any more of the headaches and stuff like that, right? Nah, nah. Yeah. Nah. But they but, also didn't operate on you at that point. Oh, they? yeah. Well, they, they did. Oh, okay. Big, you could feel on my head that they actually made a big saw right through there to open up. Remember, this is non less invasive. This is the old way of doing everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they opened my head. Gave me a haircut, <laughs> you know. Well, at least there's a bonus there. That's right. Yeah. So, anyway, that was pretty good. You had the you had the stroke, and then had all the heart stuff, or you had heart stuff first, and then the stroke. Uh, no, the stroke was after having the mechanical valve. Ah. Oh. Okay. Now, does it? Do you think that caused the stroke, or? Yes. Yes. yes the mechanical valve. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Why was it a valve that was later shown to be not particularly good? It's just the the mechanical valves theoretically by themselves will last forever. But the problem is people get little strokes and stuff like that from them. From them, yeah, or so how yeah. bad was your stroke? I mean, we can see that you, to this day, you have some remnants of the problem, you know. Oh, okay. You, as you say, you, a little bit of the, that issue. You can't spell anymore, for instance. Uh, I can't read. You can't read. Correctly. Okay. Can you spell? Yeah, but very, but, well, yeah, but letters by letters, mm -hmm. some words, mm -hmm. you know, some words I can write, but Putting a sentence all together, not not my issue. Yeah. What I do is I find things on the on the computer mm -hmm. 
which I can have it read to me. Okay, just getting a story. If you wrote a story or whatever, I could read that story and have it talk to me and tell me what the story is. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, you know I can look at the little bit of the quickie New York Times, the you know the quickie version that you can do mm -hmm. a bunch of things in one day. I can do that. Uh, I'm not great at it, but you know I can hack it around. Once but it's amazing, time. isn't it, that you you of course you grew up with the ability, right, to read all of that. And then all of a sudden, one day you wake up, you can't do it anymore. Yeah, that's right. And 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 it took me a, a year for physical therapy uh, to uh, learn how to speak again. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you guys know that certain times I'm I, I'm saying the wrong word. Yeah, you know, right. Things like right. that. Well, yeah. So, but I, I was at the point where I, you know, at the beginning I couldn't even say anything. But I was very lucky that we kept working with uh, this place called Gaylord, mm -hmm. which is in New Haven, and um, and they kept getting the government to keep paying for me. To go through all this uh, learning, yeah, and then after a year, and I, I ran this car, this company, and after a year, I went back to work, <laughs> and it was kind of strange, because so I had one big engineer guy, mm -hmm. and he was running the whole company, and a very smart, polished night guy. Okay, so I say, Bill, how's it going? Oh, everything's wonderful. I says, great. I says, uh, and, and you know who Becton Dickinson is? Yeah, yeah, BB. Yep. Yeah. So I used to do a lot of stuff for BB. Wow. So I said to Bill, I says, I said, how many projects are you working on on BD? Well, uh, they'll call us when they need us. <laughs> okay. That was his approach. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I said, let's get every guy that we know at BD that we've ever worked with personally. And I said, call him and, and, and say, I'm coming to, tomorrow and I'd like to see you at 8 o'clock. But if you can't come there, tell me what time it'd be more appropriate, and I'll adjust that. Because I'm going to see a bunch of people at BD, and I just go through this whole thing, and I don't know how many people I talk to, maybe 15 or something like that. So I get there, and we get in the car, and Bill says, "See, they'll call us when they need us." <laughs> he says, "Obviously, they don't have." You don't need anything now. While in the car going home, he picks up the phone and calls us. He says, yeah, I got a project for you guys. Wow. So you got back to work in a year. <laughs> yeah, but were, were there parts of that job you couldn't do because of the limitations of the stroke? Of course. Yeah. But they, they, they saw you through that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had a deal. And, you know, they were in a big company, a medical company, and they've got to, ex I don't know, intellectually accept that. Mm -hmm. You know, that because all of these guys know this can happen to them, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, have, we, have, we have a couple of guys that have been there as long as I have, and then they say they're going to retire because they're older than me. They're going to retire, and then they end up retiring, but then they're, I see, see them. I said, Mark, what are you doing here? I thought you retired. We just had a party for you two weeks ago. And he says, yeah, they just call me in, just ask me some questions. And then, then they just linger around because the expertise is so good yeah. that they're sort of bored and they just come in and help out with some projects. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's one, I did some volunteer work at, at Adrian school and like, there's a little boy there and his eyes, his eyes like nonstop, like moving mm -hmm. just a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, and it's sort of good. Adrian sees stuff like that, you know, because, you know, I tell her, you know, geez, you got to be thankful for your life because geez just little something one little you know minute thing is different in his brain or mm -hmm. some well, nerve it system could have something you know. could have something to do with um um vertigo 
yeah, uh, musician of vertigo me. because I have it. And mm -hmm. when my doctor looks at my eyes, he d tests it looking at my eyes, and sometimes it, he'll find it mm. going like this. Mm -hmm. And that's from positional vertigo. Now, I don't know mm. what the trouble with, is with a kid of that age. Yeah. I doubt if it's positional vertigo. But no, it's really noticeable. But yeah, I explained to her, you know, how, how lucky you are to be, you know, like you are and, and as healthy as you are and you got to keep eating good and being good you know to your body and, and everything because uh it's just one little thing different and you if know, you're not a good girl you're gonna have a stroke yes if you're bad <laughs> you know i mean um uh the the only person the, body the only person uh uh well actually i've known uh, jeff longer than uh, will durst after he had the stroke, okay, oh, yeah. because that's been about that's been about uh, almost four years now, mm. uh, and uh, I think I knew you more than four years ago. So oh, yeah. you're the sec second person I ever knew with a stroke, but I'm a little more intimately involved in the Will Durst situation because mm. I I call him and I see him and I see his progress, and after four years. There's not a hell of a lot of progress. He got his hand mm. working, got his hand working, but his foot, his legs still in nothing. Mm. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know if there's a possibility that one day he's going to wake up and all of a sudden the leg's going to be working. But the government certainly doesn't help because mm. when you try and get in, uh, Medicare for it, they will only give you like so many weeks of, of PT and then you got to stop for a year till they give you another couple of you know, maybe mm -hmm. four or five months of, of PT. Well, that doesn't do any good because if you need physical training, you need it continually, right? Am I right, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. You can't. But I got to tell you, I, Pam and, and this uh, Gaylord Hospital really negotiated with the with the government. Yeah. On, on like a weekly basis. Yeah. Or a monthly basis to to get them to because you should be getting running. people who have that kind of situation should be getting physical therapy continually because that's, that's the only home. way they're going to get better. Yeah, and the, the, man, there's so much money around. You know, I hate to say this again, but you know, all this money going to these different countries for for wars. But but I mean, th there should be a physical therapist at Jeff's house to help him. Not not just that Jeff has to go drive in, especially like Alex, like you, right? Have to take a cab to get to the hospital and all that stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, no, it's yeah. terrible. It's terrible. Hello there, Charlie. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Fresh in from the softball field. <clears throat> just fresh in from the softball field. We're talking about strokes. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, I'm <laughs> working on one. Yeah. You know, um, you know, cowboy uh, fan, yeah, you are working. Well, you, I, you have a strong heart. You have a strong <laughs> heart, so I'd say you're okay, Charlie. You're 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 a tough guy. So <laughs> I don't think my heart is a problem to me. He, my doctor has looked at it, and it's it's you know <clears throat> got a little bit of stenosis, but he said at your age, it's to be expected. Okay. What's stenosis? Stenosis is hardening of the artery of the yeah. aorta. In mm -hmm. my case, it's aortic stenosis. And it's it's uh, it's some plaque building up there, but it isn't so much plaque as hardening. I think am I, am I, am I right or am I wrong, Jeff? Yeah, you're pretty close. Yeah, and and uh, how uh, many when you're aortic valve? Yeah, do you have two valves that seal inside, or is there three? I don't know. Okay. Uh, he just told me that he checks the aorta. And I guess maybe it's the, the head of the aorta instead of where it spreads out or something. And there's a little bit of stuff in there. It's, you know, not not even plaque, I don't think. It's just a hardening of it. Yeah. And uh, well, that's stenosis. Uh, yeah. And uh, But he said it's nothing that's ever going to kill you. He says it may be we'll, we'd have, a, have, have to have a heart operation in about 50 years. Mm -hmm. He said, but you're well, not going to. Awesome. Huh? That's awesome. Tell him you want to make an appointment right now. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, it might take that long. <laughs> well, I'm I'm mad at my doctor, the one I'm going to go see tomorrow because he. Oh, that's great. No, I mean, no, I'm pissed at him. He's been my general practitioner for what 15 years or as long as I've known Marjorie because she turned me on to him. 
Mm. So I started going to him. Actually, I went to his his partner, but then she left and went over to um, uh, Mount Sinai, and I uh, I just stuck with him. And uh, he this year I'm I'm like uh, you know I get my my um, pills my medication from uh, Costco uh, by mail, and mm. uh, so I I all of a sudden I look and I go. Gee, they keep sending me these things saying these pills aren't uh, being okayed or something like that, and they aren't going through. And I, I call them up, and they say, well, what's happening? They say, well, we call your doctor uh, to see about, you know, giving you a new course of the pills, which he has to do. And he, uh, they, uh, uh, they haven't gotten back to us. So I got a hold of my doctor's office, and I got a hold of this woman who was really nasty as hell. And I said to her, I said, Costco isn't filling out my prescriptions because you haven't okayed them. And they said they've sent you several notifications. They, I think they, they write to them and then they call them and then they, I don't know, they send them a telegram. I have no idea what the other thing is, but they try it. And they, she said, oh, well, the reason we haven't is because you haven't seen the doctor this year. I said, well, wait a minute. You know, don't you call us when we need to come see you? Well, you know, I don't sit there with a, a, a calendar and say, oh, it's time for me to get my yearly, you know? It's really your job to say to me, hey, uh, don't you, we suggest you come in for your li yearly uh, um, thing, and I would I just come in and do it. She said, well, we just don't do that. I said, you used to. She said, well, we don't do it anymore. She said, very nasty. And I said, so you, what you're telling me is if I don't come in and the doctor doesn't see me, he's going to deprive me of the very medicines that are keeping me from getting heart attacks, high blood pressure, a lot of other things, right? And she says, yep. Mm -hmm. And I went, wow, it's not my favorite doctor anymore. You know, call me up, tell me, hey, look, we, we were seeing that we have to uh, redo your prescriptions. Uh, we haven't seen you in a year, and really the doctor likes mm -hmm. to see the patients he prescribes medicine to. And I go, okay, fine, now let's set up a date. But don't tell me you're going to prevent me from having the very medicine I need to prevent me from having illness. And that's what essentially they were doing. They were holding up, uh, uh, they were holding up my visit with the doctor <laughs> in, in uh, uh, you know, uh, they were holding my, my drugs for ransom, as it were. And I didn't like that. I thought that was nasty and mean. But it's a little hard for me to go out and suddenly get another... Um, doctor although i'm thinking of finding one uh, because i i just i just didn't like that and he's been my doctor for 15 years but you know they've all gotten a little uh, uh, i talked to my urologist about this stuff because he's pretty sympathetic when i tell him about my doctor doing that to me he goes well that's just not right you know in fact with him i walk out of his office and he says you want to make an appointment for a year from now you know, so I mean, that's the kind of uh, that's the kind mm -hmm. of service you want from your doctor. Not, I'm not going to uh, uh, do your medicine for you uh, because you haven't come in to see me. Mm -hmm. Well, I can understand he'd like to see me because he is prescribing these medicines to me. I would like to see that he doesn't need to upgrade a lot of the medicine, so on and so forth. But I didn't know that it was o over a year since I saw him last, mm -hmm. and I kind of think it's his job to let me know. I mean, you all have doctors. Don't your doctors uh, g give you a call and then you, they say, hey, you know, you're coming up for your yearly. Uh, do you want us to make a date for you? I've got a dentist that does that like crazy. You haven't had your teeth cleaned in the last six months. Uh, you want to come in and get them clean. But this guy is expecting me to keep all the paperwork on this thing? Come on. I think you had a, a, a bad nurse there that took that phone call. No, I, well, she she was no, she was a bad nurse in handling it, but yeah, the, that's what I mean, uh, apparently that's the policy of the doctor now. But I've had doctors tell me that, but they didn't tell me that like that. They would say something like, "Okay, uh, yeah, I just got a prescription." They would call me when they get the prescription and they haven't seen me, and they would call me and say, "Hey, we need yes, to see exactly. you." Yes, exactly. Because. It, we can't we can't approve this prescription without seeing you. And they can't they can't call you this morning at nine thirty. I'm asleep. The phone rings. I didn't answer it. And when I yeah. went to see who it was, 
It was my doctor, and they left a message, and she said, well, we, we want you to confirm your appointment for tomorrow. Uh, please call us back. Uh, and and I, uh, I, uh, uh, I didn't call them back because I didn't see that the, the, the message had come, you know, the message was there until after they had closed. Now, you would think that if I call their offices, there would be some kind of thing that would allow me to leave them a message to say, yeah. I'm confirming. All my other doctors actually have emails that go out or texts that go mm -hmm. out that you just go see to confirm. Mm -hmm. You know, this one, I've got to call her back. And when I call her back, they're not even able to take a message after hours. Come on, you know. Uh, and uh, that, that kind of has me pissed all the way around so it's i mean it's a difficult system between your yeah drug store okay yeah and 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 it's your your patient uh, you know mm -hmm. which is you and the doctor and then who are the management in the hospital or in the guy's office that different people of it have different handles with with uh, negotiating these times yeah. and and setting them out, and the one the one biggest pain in the ass that I ever find is the drugstore guys, really? because as soon as I need another uh, drug, because I'm running to the end, yeah. okay, and, and I'm only supposed to get it for whatever three months, and yeah. then after that, you're dead. You're dead toast. Well, no, my what they do with at Costco is they call the doctor and they say that this yes. is up for renewal. Uh, do you want to renew it? They would go yes, and they would send in the information and get renewed. Okay, yeah. very simple process. Uh, um, uh, yes, you can have trouble with various pharmacies because they're just individuals, but in, in the case of uh, Costco, I can't recommend their uh, their uh, uh, write in. You know their where you get the stuff from them by mail. They're very good, and they're very effective with it. I mean, they tried my doctor three times to try and get this medication. They didn't just try one and, once and say, well, we didn't get it, so, you know, we can't give them the pills. But it, it just bothered me, you know. And, and what happened also with my doctor is that, and this happened with quite a few doctors, it's this concierge service. Is anybody aware of this? Oh. If, if you subscribe to your doctor's concierge service, which usually costs about $2,000 to $2,500 a year, he'll actually call you back. <laughs> I mean, it's like, he, he, it isn't so much call you back uh, as it is... Uh, um, uh, he he will he has these things. If you get his concierge service, he will be able to talk to you on weekends. Really? Uh, he, yes. And it's he from the house yeah. <laughs> and he may occasionally make a house call if need be. I remember if he can remember talking. where he put his bag because he hasn't used it in yeah. years. You know. And and so they have these these concierge services, and a lot of doctors are doing this. I mean, the guys over at this blood place that handled mm. me so badly and never got even back to me with the results of my tests, mm. uh, the woman calls me up a couple of weeks, about a month or so later, after I'm sitting there steaming over the fact this guy never called me back, and she says, I'm calling from Dr. So-and-so's office. Uh, he'd like to uh, have you come in for a follow-up. I said, a follow-up to what? He didn't even tell me how the original test turned out. And then... About two weeks later, after I told her that, you know, I said, I don't want to come into him anymore. She calls me and says, Hi, I'm calling from Dr. So and so's office. Uh, we'd like to know if you'd be interested in his concierge service. <laughs> oh, you mean that I get my blood test results if I pay him $2,000 a year? <laughs> They'll actually tell you what they found out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who yeah, knows? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, thanks for the two thousand bucks. We just checked you were gonna die. Uh, you know, 
Well, I'm going to die $2,000 poorer. <laughs> but, <laughs> but these guys are going to, con I don't I know, has this happened in California at all, concierge services? I haven't heard of it. I've never heard of it here. You never heard of it either. Well, welcome to New York. Hmm. We're yeah. always the first to have everything. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've been told that most doctors are going to these concierge services. And some hmm. of them, some of them the will people, only yeah. handle patients who in, are enrolled in their concierge service. Um, mm. That hasn't happened with my doctors yet, and my urologist told me all this that you know that, that, that a lot of them are doing it, and really? uh, he said I don't do it because quite frankly I like to give you a good do a good job for you and that's it you know, I mean and that's the doctor that saved my life. But that's out of your pocket, isn't it? Not insurance, right? They don't. Uh, oh, that, they don't cover concierge Hell services. No. no. Hell no. No, you know. So, I mean, it... it well, well, wipe out your FSA in a shot. Well, what I'd like to say to him is, is this in lieu of, of insurance? You know, will you take care of me in yeah, spite of the case. fact I'm that... I'm I got the money in my room. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, you know. But, I mean, that, but that's what's happened to medicine today. And the very people yeah. that I used to trust, I can't trust anymore. I mean, I, the only one I try, I trust my urologist implicitly. I mean, he yeah, does, he does a blood test to test my PSA, and the next morning, like yeah, he 30, when he gets the test back, he writes me yeah. an email, says, he writes you, He texts me right to my phone, Alex. Huh? He texts me, Ricardi, right to my phone. Yeah. Invisible. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> yeah, you guys have the same urologist? No, no, but he's really on top of me like uh, his doctor is. Well, no, but really, I, 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 I like I, him. My sister went with me. I, I, went. I usually I hated every urologist I ever had. Uh, and you should love a guy who sticks his finger up your ass. But anyway. You should love him. Yeah. And, and mm. he had some flowers for me last time. <laughs> I, uh, heard Alex. I tried to breathe in. I couldn't do it. What? I, I try to take it to the happy place. <laughs> oh, guess who's well. had coffee tonight? I had a little bit. I, was, yeah, little I watched bit. that stupid Tucker Carlson. I was gonna. I was so. I had to turn it off. That interview with Putin. I had to turn it off. Well, it was, so, it was it. so softball. You weren't gonna learn anything from yeah, it anyway. Yeah, ask him any questions. Like, yeah. Why'd you invade wait, a minute, sovereign we're country? Another, we're, we're, not, we're, we're on another topic right now. I'm sorry. I'll well, that one's it. an old topic. He did that several weeks ago. I know. I, I never got around to watching it, so I, I had to turn it. Sorry. I was watching a World War II doc, too. That hmm. it, I did have some Anything else there. you have to say so we before we go on? No, I, I, no I'm pretty... Oh, I was going to ask you something. I actually... Can I ask you something quick? You're going to ask me something? I was watching, okay. Yeah. I was watching a WW2 doc on Netflix, right behind the lines. This may be, sound like a stupid question. It was all in color. Alex, did they actually film these war pieces back then? Because it seems like it's so realistic. Like, is that actual footage? Well, of it, depends. All that when it depends. It depends. I don't know who's doing the documentary. And if I could see it, I could tell you. I could but see the there was, on there, was, there was quite a bit of footage taken in color during World War II. But color only came in in about, what well, was it, 1936. So you got to realize yeah. World War II was just you know ten years, but eight years later, six, yeah. seven years later, so they didn't have a lot of color film, let alone color film that you could shoot with one camera. They shot most Technicolor and everything on three reels with three different you know lenses, and um, consequently, um, uh, a lot of that stuff that you see that's in color yeah. is colorized. Oh, okay, because it looks so wild. I'm so watching this. It's so, it's so, it's like unbelievable to see it, like so vivid, like wow, how oh, they no, catch it. It's colorized. It's colorized. Um, and it's, some of it's pretty terrible, and some of it's pretty good, you know, but I mean, it doesn't matter. I don't care if I, if it's in color or not. I kind of like black and white myself, though, when I'm watching it. Well, I mean, they, especially World War II. I mean, that was a black and white war, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, anyway, so, okay, shut up for a couple minutes. Okay, I'll be quiet. Uh, <laughs> That's the only way to handle him, you know. <laughs> That's right. You know, you know. <laughs> Did anybody see the uh, attorney general from Georgia today? I yeah. listened to it. Yeah. yeah. At least an hour. God, I like her. She's feisty. Yes, she is. Uh, very what they're doing is she had an affair, okay, with a member of her team who oh, was wow. the person she put in charge of the team. 
But the question. I thought this was the district attorney. What? I thought this was the district attorney. It was no. It was the, it was whoever she pointed in charge. Put a, put a you know, pointed okay. in Sorry. charge of, Sorry. of 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 the investigation. Okay. But she, she basically uh, attorneys. And at some point, they, uh, they according to her, uh, long after she appointed him, by the way, quite a bit after she appointed him, they had their first affair together. They had this their first sexual encounter. I mean, and she's talking about all this like she's talking about you know very private stuff she shouldn't even have to talk about. And she just said no. She says you know we and and. Uh, he said, then they said, well, did you break up when you found out that you were found out and blah, 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 blah. She said, no, we quit months before that because I called it off, you know. And, and it, was just, it, was just, it was just that I couldn't figure out <clears throat> how, let's say she was having sex with this guy when she appointed him. Mm. So the fuck what, you know? If there's a case to be had there, there's a case to be had there. <clears throat> against Donald Trump and this whole, you know, cabal that was working with him, excuse me, I'm belching here, uh, who was having, you know, all these things. And I'm, I'm going, you know, it's just terrible. It's really terrible. Uh, and I felt that she, I didn't see any reason why they should say, well, you have to stop, uh, you have to be, we have to replace you and everybody that's on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, what do you call it? the the commit the group that put together this uh, uh, this uh, you know this uh, indictment? Uh, I I just couldn't see why that made any difference, you know, who she was fucking, when she was fucking him, or anything else. <laughs> do, Charlie, you're always very critical of this kind of stuff. Can you see any uh, any importance to any of that? Well, I mean, if he he was the thing is, it's not like he wasn't qualified to do the job right he was qualified to do the job he just happened to be having an affair with her. that that would, like you said it happened after they probably got romantically involved after they worked together for so many hours for so many months yeah and then some woman on the on, 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 on the group that was doing the indictment uh, mm -hmm. said no they were having an affair way before that and blah 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 and i'm thinking to myself do I really gonna believe this person? She must have had some kind of hard on against uh, against the you know the uh, uh, the attorney general. She's the attorney general of the state. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But I mean, they swore sworn testimony and depositions that they hadn't had an affair prior to him joining and yeah. being hired. That he got hired, and then I guess they just got horny for each other. So that happens, you know. I mean, where else are you going to meet people who screw but at work? Yeah. You know? So, yes, uh, you had your... You're talking about Fannie Willis. Yeah. She's the district attorney. Yeah. <clears throat> and this, not, it, it, and you Fulton said County, attorney yeah. general. Well, a, a district attorney of where? In, in Fulton, in... Fulton County, Georgia. Fulton County, Fulton County okay. Georgia. Okay. She's the one going after Trump. But you said attorney okay, general. Okay, so I made a mistake. Okay. I was it ain't going to be the last time, pal. Yeah, well, I haven't seen the news, and so I just wanted to make sure I was on the same page. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, I mean, he, uh, she was in charge of appointing the guy to head yes. up the, the whatever the panel, the committee, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, they're saying that she hired him because she was having sex with him. And she says, I wasn't, you know. We only started sex after after I appointed him, and, you know, we were working with each other every day, and one thing led to another, and we found each other in the same bed together, you know. And and she just, but she just got really na mad and mad nasty at this Republican who was cross-examining <laughs> her and uh, saying, you know, I don't have to answer any of this stuff. This is all private stuff, you know. I don't have any, I don't have to answer it, but I'm answering it. And I'm here answering it, and she said, I didn't say I wasn't going to show up here today. And she said, in fact, I was running in here because I wanted to be, do this and get this over with and tell you my side of the story. And it was, I felt, uh, I felt kind of sorry for her, you know. I mean, I'm sorry we live in a world in which people are sexual human beings 
And uh, when things happen, things happen. And you can say, well, we can't do it because, you know, you're working on this thing and uh, I'm heading it up and blah, 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 blah. But no, you know, things happen. Yeah, maybe she shouldn't have, you know, just to be on the safe side. But so what, you know? And uh, she said, we don't, have, we don't have a relationship anymore sexually. And it was, the reason it stopped was because... Uh, um, there were some reasons she gave that, you know, he had a certain personality quirk that she didn't like or something. A good reason, you know. But, I mean, it, it just was kind of sad that it had to come to this, that somebody had to, real, real, you know, get up there in front of uh, millions of people and say, hey, uh, you know, I'm a slut, <laughs> basically, <laughs> you know. He's a drunk guy. <laughs> yeah. They were they were slut shaming her. So, I mean, how can they prove it anyway? I mean, they can't prove it. So it's like well, it's not a matter of proving it. It doesn't even really matter. Is it, it really a, even it is a matter of proving it? I mean, when they found out about it, they asked her, "Are you?" And she went, "Yes." You know, she didn't hide it. She didn't pull a Trump and and try and evade it or lie about it or you know whatever. Well, say fake news. <laughs> yeah, fake I mean, news. she was very open about it. You know, but it's the Trump people who want to get her and her uh, entire committee thrown out and a whole new one put in there, hoping that, you know, but there, there's already an indictment, so I don't think that can be vacated, okay, unless these new guys come along and do it. And they, they're probably hoping, hoping the Trump people, that, that that's exactly what's going to happen, you know, so, whatever. So... Anyway, how you doing, uh, Kevin? All right. <laughs> <laughs> be nice. All right. What, what do you mean, be nice? Be nice to him. I'm, We're trying I'm, to be nice to Kevin. I'm nice to Kevin. Am I, I know, Am I ever we, not nice we, to you, Kevin? We had, to, we had to be special nice to Kevin this week. Why, why is that? Why? why? Because he's... He's a 49er fan, remember? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Shit was over 9.30 that night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now the carnage has begun and everything's all over the place. So it's, it's a shit. Now nah, you know how it feels. Last year we went through the same thing and we got the wrong people. Now we're cleaning house again. Even the, the quarterback coaches, the running back coaches, we clean house. And what's same Dallas here. doing? Same thing. Nothing. No, they haven't so done anything. Oh, no, I mean, we are, we are the defensive defense. coordinator. Oh, you did? Yeah. We have oh. to because he went the coach to Washington Commanders. Yeah, it was with oh. McDonald. Oh, McDonald. Hmm. Friend of Quinn's. Hmm. Defensive coordinator. I'll know. have to look <laughs> that one up. Anyway. <clears throat> No, uh, uh, well, of, of course, uh, Tony. Uh, excuse me, uh, Ch uh, Charlie and uh, and and uh, oh, Brian. Man, my, 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 I'm just Brian. Uh, are um, Not always at each other's throats about this. Okay, you, you're you're a uh, what is it? A Philadelphia fan? Yes. Yeah. And 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 uh, Charlie is Charlie's a cowboy. Cowboys, Cowboys fan. Is there We're any reason? All at each other's throats. Cowboy Nation. Huh? He's a real cowboy. Well, there fan. are other football teams in Texas, aren't there? Not yeah. oh, Charlie. It's only it. Dallas. Yeah. A great name is the Texas Texans. Really? Is that the other football team? Well, Houston Texans. The Houston yeah. Texans. Boy, they must have stayed up all night coming up with that name. I, I think it's an AFL team, old name. What, the Texas Texans? I, the Houston Texans, I think, were from the AFL. I'm almost yeah, positive. Yeah, they are from the AFL. Yeah. Name, yeah. It's I like being the San Franciscans Franciscan. Yeah. I like the Houston yeah. Oilers. Those were great. Those were great outfits. I was a big Oilers fan because Earl Campbell, Earl Campbell. Campbell. Yeah, Earl Campbell. He was great. got the Heisman Trophy at the University of Texas. Uh, played for the Oilers, so I was a big Oiler fan back in. What 70s. happened to the Oilers? They moved to Tennessee to become the Tennessee Titans. Yep. They can't they take their name with them. Well, it'd be funny that Tennessee Oilers. Oilers. They don't have oil in Tennessee. So, <laughs> so uh, you know what I hate about it are these teams, uh, and I'm not a football fan, mm -hmm. as you know, 
But if I was a football fan, I would be very incensed by the fact that I, you know, I have a home team and I'm, I'm rooting for them, cheering for them, yeah, and they're called the Oakland Raiders. And all of a sudden, see you later. We're moving to Las Vegas. Yeah, I would. If that Jets and, ever and, did that, I'd be forget. I would never root for them again. I would. I would <laughs> they should be. Sued. I have a hard time rooting for them now. I mean, the Baltimore Colts moved to Indianapolis. They kept the name. But you know what? The, the, well, no, the, the, the Browns, fans yeah. have a loyalty towards these teams, and those teams, in return, do not have any loyalty for their fans. Nope. The only like it's all about the money. Yeah. The Build me a stadium. Right that's right all they say. Yeah, what, the owners. What, what were you saying, Kevin? So the A's are doing it right now. Are they? Yeah. they yeah, well, the, a, yeah. the Oakland A's are trying to move to what? Vegas, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're demolishing the Tropicana. Put them where the they Tropicana. Going there. Wow. Well, and then now and now they don't even have a place to play next year. I, uh, well, it's a <laughs> shit show. That's a that's a royal shit show. They get to draw nobody. Well, why what, why didn't they stay in Oakland? What what were the they demands to stay in Oakland? They didn't build them a stadium, and that's they're it. not. What's wrong with the stadium they had? I've been to that. It's kind of old. It's garbage. Is, is, yeah. is it really garbage? What yeah, is it? it was like Shea Stadium. Yeah. The toilets were backing up into the dugouts and everything was bad. <laughs> <laughs> they are literally. Shea Stadium was horrible at the end when I used to go to my brother. Like candlestick. What, oh. what is it? They just weren't taking care of it? Is that? I didn't go to the bathroom. Or just got things. How the thing was built in oh. what sixty something? Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's old. I have it's to look old. it up. It was sort of ahead. made for football and baseball, so they yeah. they did they, they this, those stadiums don't work anymore. Yeah, because they destroyed the stadium. Built in That's the where the Yankees let nobody play there. Wrigley Field was built in 1910, and yeah, but they don't there. they don't play they football. Don't play on football. It. They don't play football yeah. on that. They play baseball. Yeah, but that that's so it. that that's fine. But when they change it for football and stuff, it's not designed it's it as terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. very it's very easy to change in uh, in Houston at that new stadium because all they have to do is pull out the old field and put in, <laughs> pull it slide in yeah. the new one. You know. Yeah, well, that's what they do in Oakland now. It's literally on a tray. They grow it outside and then they shove it. Really, back that's what they did the in, in that new <clears throat> new stadium down in uh, down in uh, Las yeah. Vegas. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I said. And so what I, happens I when it's Oakland? On... I meant, I meant. Uh, okay, so uh, it's on the tray. They move it out. Yeah. They let the sun shine on it and grow the grass beautifully. Because a lot of these stadiums are it's in kind of, kind of, kind of indoor super. stadiums, and it's better if they can, like Houston, they probably have to keep the top of all the time because it gets blazing hot in Houston. Oh right? yeah. So they have this tray yeah, that goes out, that. and then when they're going to play football, they move the tray in. Um. I was impressed with the uh, the Ag Agil what is it Agilent Stadium? Yeah, the the Raiders Stadium when I went there. It looks nice. Absolutely. I was impressed with it. I mean, they got a whole ecosystem there going. They recycle all the old food. They recycle all the you know all the plates, all the everything. All the toilet paper. They make sure all that stuff gets <laughs> Don't recycled. Throw it out. I got another. <laughs> then the extra food goes all the food banks and everything else. Oh, that's it's, good. it's it's an amazing operation to be honest with you. And I I'm not a Raider fan at all, but I was thoroughly impressed with the place. But this tray goes out, and where does it go? I mean, is there a whole space? It's straight outside, and there's another field out there. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, it's fenced in, and they got an area to go out to go outside. Oh, okay. And then it just <laughs> it's sits. It's a desert. Out. They got plenty of room out there. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it, it just there. sits out there, right? <laughs> just sits out there. And, and that way they don't have to have AstroTurf because it was killing people. Oh, well, I, I was think, in, uh, I was in on that years ago when they built the the Astrodome, which was you know the first indoor um, stadium yeah. in the country yeah. in the seventies. And I got there in year two, and by year two they were having a real problem because first of all, when they had this indoor stadium, okay, they had they had windows. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> they had windows. Uh, and that was fine. The only problem was it was a kind of a lattice work. And so when, let's say, a high fly would go up, nobody mm. could see it because of all no, the, it was like, you know, you, all yeah. the all the vi various windows and, and beams yeah. and so mm -hmm. on. So they said, well, we got to do something about this. What are we going to do? So they, they painted, they covered all the windows with paint. They painted them up. So now the entire inside of the stadium was... But now the grass was dying. They had yeah. a couple guys hit it. Hit the roof too. What? 
a couple guys yeah. hit the roof too. Did the roof? I think Gilbert hit, hit one. Hit the roof with the ball during. Oh, game. hit the roof with the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that wasn't the big problem. The big problem was no. the grass was dying. Yeah. So then mm -hmm. they decided. All of a sudden, I get a call that says, "There's a big. Uh, uh, it's going to be a big uh, press conference out at uh, Astros at the, out at the Astrodome, and uh, you're invited." And I went, oh, "Okay, good." Oh. So we go over there and we sit down. And they say, "We found a way to solve our whole grass problem." Come on, walk well, onto our field. This is a new thing we've invented with Monsanto called AstroTurf. That's where it got its name, from the Astrodome. Yep. And that's how they started playing using uh, AstroTurf. Yep. And I went down there, and I, I kind of felt that it was a little, I mean, if I were going to play on I'd like to play on real grass, you know. Oh, you know, like a rug? Like, it it, it's a, almost like a rug, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember walking on the field one yeah, time. I think they, hard. I didn't like it the way it gave you burns when you slid on it. it they, they, had to have, they had to have different uh, cleats that they used. Yeah. yeah. You, know. you could slip on it easy. No, it wasn't that you could slip on it easy. You could dig it up with the other kind of cleats. Yeah. That was the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, for, for, I saw that whole thing go down as just one big problem after another. And then the players would get turf toe. Turf yeah. toe? Yeah. Turf toe, yeah. Because it was a different surface and they were pushing off different They've places. improved Astro turf, yeah. though, haven't they? Uh, yeah, sort of, I guess. But yeah, they don't think part anymore. Yeah. Called so artificial turf, turf yeah. What's it called artificial now? Artificial turf, and they put huh. it's a little thicker, and they put these uh, little rubber balls in. They lay yeah, the, the black balls shit comes in, up, it, yeah. you know, the black shit in between it, so it's softer when they land. But that's why they say Greenlaw may have popped his Achilles because they were yeah. forcing them to uh, play on the um, UNLV's field, which yeah, is a correct. pasture turf field or artificial field. <laughs> they brought in grass field. For them mm -hmm. to work on to yeah. play, practice on they gave kc the whole facility the whole raiders facility the mm -hmm. locker room the indoor facility the whole regular playing field and then they gave the niners they said oh bring in some grass and throw it on top of the the astro turf and then that'll do them fine and on top of that it rained like hell so it was soft as shit yeah. and yeah. for two days they were talking about flying back home to practice and they went back well, they were practicing on this soft surface. Well, then they went back over and they played the game, and it was a little bit harder service. They think that maybe that's why he popped his Achilles just running into the game. Yeah, he stopped and started, it looked like. It looked like it had just He cramped. was jumping up and down, and then he yeah. ran, was running into yeah, the game, and, started playing, well, and he well, just well, went straight most, down. Most fields and and I popped my Achilles yeah. that way, really? and it was it, it happens. You you I was coming up the stairs, and all of a sudden, boom, it's gone. But wow. m most of these stadiums now are <laughs> artificial turf, if I'm not mistaken, right? Not most of them, I think. What are they? Well, probably? it has to be, I guess, that that. Well, not all of them. Well, the stadium, the stadium, the stadium they did the Super Bowl in, obviously has real turf. Yeah, I know because, Lambeau yeah. Field is grass. I know that. But they've solved that problem with that tray deal, where the tray goes out and sits yeah. out there in the yeah, sun. Yeah, they and, all don't have that. Yeah, yeah, they don't all have that. You say you Dallas? S what does Dallas have? They got artificial. They it has a retractable light. roof, so they. That's can right. Get that's what a lot of them it. have is the roof, like State Farm yeah. in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, it's retractable. That they, they open up the roof and they can let the sun in. Oh, okay. And then they have the game; they can close the top. So that's why it goes for the three hours or whatever that the game's playing. Yeah. Well, the reason I think, that, I think you guys play on turf, right, Charlie? Because you just play on a fast track, Dallas. I think that's Asher turf. Yeah. The theme uh, the theme's know. playing. The theme's playing right now. But what I remember most about that the theme's playing was no. that uh, <laughs> that uh, you know the the reason they built a dome in Houston. Was it got so damn hot in there they couldn't get people to come to a baseball game with that kind of heat? So if you had a big, wait till they go to Vegas. Y y what? Yeah. What'd you say? Wait till they get to Vegas. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> at least they're hotter than a whorehouse at high noon. Oh, that's the hot. <clears throat> that's insane. It's absolutely insane. I don't no, know why anybody heat. goes there with that heat. But it's but it's dry heat in Houston. And <laughs> oh yeah. boy, it's terrible. Dry heat, still 100. Anyway, uh, hey, listen. Uh, uh, thank you very much to Brian for joining us tonight. Good to have you here. See, we talk sports this time. 
I like this yeah. We got Jeff's life story, so that was nice. Jeff's mm-hmm. life story, yeah. that was fascinating. Absolutely mm-hmm. fascinating. Uh, Alan, we didn't hear your life story, but we don't want to. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) thank you for being with us tonight Uh, Kevin always good to see you I wanted to ask you and I'm going to have to ask you tomorrow I can't do it now but I want to ask you what what do you use on your beard to keep it soft don't answer now this is a teaser for tomorrow night it's a teaser tomorrow night night. tune in tomorrow tune in tomorrow tomorrow tune in tomorrow tomorrow talk all about his beard all right (laughs) the woman that presents him as being heterosexual anyway Alex uh, Alex, my next guest is you Kevin tomorrow night okay and thank you to Tony everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you okay there they go folks they're starting to disappear so I better disappear too because Amy Manuel is next with the uh, with the intersection. Great show, by the way. She does a terrific show, and uh, I uh, I hope you will join her uh, tonight by calling her on uh, Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>